This beehive is from our forest beehive apiary in central Maine and is hosting USDA certified Russian honeybees. They are direct descendants of the bees that were brought by USDA researchers from Russia's Far East in the late 90s. These bees had the longest exposure to Asian varroa mites and through natural selection have learned the best ways to control them. Prior to Russian bees, I had some bee colonies with common Italian genetics, but they did not went to well in Maine on their own, without supplemental feedings. This picture shows a late February dead out of my Italian bees. Although I never took any honey from this hive, these Italians died of starvation during a cold late February spell when they ate all of their own honey directly above their bee cluster. Shortly before starving, these Italians must have expected warmer weather ahead as they began rearing early brood, thereby wasting resources. But unlike Italy, in Maine, cold winter spells can last way through April. The Russian bees are used to winters even colder than in Maine, and unlike Italians, they are more frugal with their honey stores and do not rear brood in winter. They start brood much later when nectar and pollen are abundant. Here I'm doing a short two-minute mid-July inspection to see if the bees need more space. I use insulated horizontal lane style hives. They are easy to manage with minimal disturbances to the bees. Opening the lid does not irritate the bees, as their honeycombs are well covered, hardly any light reaches there. That's why the smoker is usually not necessary. I start opening a divider board placed at the end of the available bee space. The bees like to hang out there. I'm setting it aside. By moving a divider board, I can increase or decrease the available bee space within the hive. The bees have propolized the frames and they're a bit hard to open now, so I'm using the hive tool to open up a frame that was right next to the divider board. The bees have not started working this frame yet. It still only has a one inch guiding starter strip for the bees to start drawing their own natural comb. I will set this frame aside and keep looking through more frames sequentially until I find the one that the bees have started working on. I add frames gradually, every three weeks or so, as I like my bees to have three, four extra frames available to start working on. If they have fewer extra frames, they could quickly run out of room. And if they have too many extra frames, they may get overwhelmed by potentially having way too much space to heat in winter. In both cases, where the available extra space is way too tight or way too large, the likelihood of the bees disliking their setup and swarming or absconding increases. For my 20 frame lanes hives having 16 inch deep frames, the bees usually fill the maximum of about three quarters of the available space. This would mean a lower honey yield compared to conventional beekeeping, even though we are adjacent to a 3,000 acre wildlife sanctuary and have ample natural foraging available from spring to fall. The main reason why conventional beekeepers have a higher yield is that they supplement natural forage with sugar feedings, which we don't do. And the more sugar you feed to the bees, the greater will be your harvest of funny honey. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.